Hello everyone and welcome to my introduction to how to use the Waker Virtual Environment tool on Windows. Now one great thing about this tool is that under Windows you don't have to be an admin in, in order to install Waker. No, you can just download the zip files and use those and configure those and work with those. Okay, first of all I need to download some versions of Waker. So I'm going to head over to the SourceForge website where the Wake installation files are being hosted and we we'll start with 3.8, 3.8.2, 3.8.3, 3.8.4, 3.8.5, 3.8.6, 3.8.7, 3.8.8, 3.8.9, 3.8.10, 3.8.11, 3.8.12, 3.8.13, 3.8.14, 3.
it actually does. Make that a bit bigger. Right. Okay. We need to supply the name. <clears throat> we just use um, the default jail. We don't uh, we want to set some memory and the wake up jar that we're using. Okay, so back to that. Name is 382 and um, we are using memory, memory 1 gig and um, the waker jar Created. <coughs> well, now we do the same. Oh, haha! <laughs> right, I just seen the wrong archive here. Okay, well, in that case, I'll just show you how we can delete one. The delete command, and we just need to supply the name. We have three eight two. Delete that. Okay, easy enough to fix. We just have to correct the path and recreate it again. Okay, here we go, 382, and it's pointing to 382. And now we're going to create 392, and also call it 392. And then the 3611. All right, so we have our three environments, and with the list environments command I can also see an overview what I have so 3611 382 and 392 down here alright now let's start up the explorer for um, the 392 environment here we go Let's see how do we install the package as well. Just gonna list all the commands again. So you can see here's a package manager GUI command. So we're gonna use that one for 392 because we wanna install some packages there. First time around it takes a little while. Clustering. Let's install that. Okay, that installed. Let's bring up the Explorer again. Open a file. Check whether it is correctly installed. So we go and tab, and yes, we have Clop available. Cool, so that worked. Now, if I start up the Explorer for 3A2, once again, just quickly open a file so we can go to the cluster tab. Open it up, and yet no Clop. All right. Okay, now you can see there's a new directory in my home directory called Vecca Virtual Env. And if I go in there, you have an environments subdirectory. And in here, basically, are the three environments that I created. So if I go in one of those, you see a props file that basically just contains the setup and the usual Vecca files directory. So what the Weka virtual environment tool does, it makes extensive use of the Weka underscore home 
environment variable that Weka supports to set a custom home directory for Weka. So each environment, when you launch anything, basically goes in its own separate directory with its own props files and its own packages and its own log file. Let's go up here again. Cool. Now, if you're just trying out a new package, um, you might not want to do that in your production environment, but you might just want to use like a test environment. And it's quite easy with the clone command to do exactly that. So here are the options. Um, so it takes the name of the old environment and what the new name should be. Could update the Java that you're using, the memory, and the Java if you wanted to. You could set some environment variables, or if you really just want to use the setup and not any packages may be installed, then you can do that too with the setup only option. Or if you want to empty any environment, environment variables that you've set in the other one, you can use the no environment variables option for that. Okay, anyway, so we will just simply create a clone of our uh, 3.9.2. So old is 3.9.2 and new is 3.9.2 test, uh, just as is. Here we go. Go back into our environments here. And yeah, we also have a 392 in here now. All right, let's fire that baby up. And just try again with the Explorer. File again. Yep, we still have Clope in here, so it copied all the packages across, excellent. And we could um, install some other packages. We're starting up the package manager then for this. So this could be, for instance, the experimental package that we want to try out. All right, that installed. Now we start up the Explorer again. Just a little data set again. Let's do maybe Iris. Let's head over to the Classify tab. And under the trees, we now have J48 Craft. Cool. So if we now head over to our original 392, once again in the Explorer, and open once again a file. Uh, try the arrows again. Classify and I'll open up. Oops. Open up the classifiers. And yep, not J48 Craft. So. Cool, so that worked, and but I've done testing now, and I'm good with that. So once again, I want to delete, and I've forgotten what the options were, so I'm just going to output the help. Oh, so I just have to supply the name. And 392 test, goodbye. And just delete things. And if I go back in here, in the environments, I can see, yep, 392 test is gone. Okay. So that's the basics, but I can also run other tools. For instance, if I list the commands again. So for instance, up here, I can also run the R viewer. So if I um, R viewer and help. So launches the wiki after you, you can supply data set file names. All right, so if we want to fire 392 
and then we can um, load a data set. Um, 392 data iris, fire it up with it, and it automatically loads that in. See whether it can handle multiple files on Windows. At least it works on Linux. And yep, that works too. So it loads basically all the R files in that directory immediately. Cool. Load another thing. Done. Okay. Now I can also just run um, command line classes like classifiers, clusters, and so on. For that, I can use the run command. So if I'm looking at that, um, it just has one parameter called class. That's the thing that we want to execute. And it says that all unconsumed command line options basically get passed on to that particular class. So if I want to run J48, um, for instance, cross validated, so our data set, um, we just use once again, three, nine, oops. data, let's use the iris data set, and run that. Oops, I forgot the environment, you're right about that. So 392, we want to run it in. Oh well, something to look into. <laughs> uh. Anyhow, uh, I'll have to look into that. I'm not a Windows user usually, so we'll just look at how we can actually start up the GUI. So if we go back um, into the installation directory in the bin directory, so we also have a GUI batch file. So if we bring that up, Work environment GUI, fire that up. Then you can see you have on the left hand side your environments 3611 with all the parameters that you've configured um, 302, 392, and um, you have a drop down list here so you can clone, delete, and update an environment, and then the various parameter uh, options for launching GUI environments. And as a shortcut, the GUI chooser is also as an extra button if you use it quite often. And if you want to create a new one, you can just use the create up here. So in case you're doing changes on the command line, for instance, adding or removing environments, you can just reload things here then. All right, now you can see that 3611 neither has a package manager nor the workbench, and these are only available in later versions. So as you can see here, cool, okay. It's for instance in 382. Let's start up um, the Explorer. So that brings up a new tab here, and all the output that you would usually see on the command line will then happen over here. Right. So, but we want to maybe run an experiment. Let me just close that one here and then just look at that one. So you can see, uh, yeah, some output the command line. So new experiment uh, we want to add a data set let's just use iris to make it quick and add some like zero as a baseline um, add j48 that'll probably do oops, making it larger okay start that and you can see the output so black is basically what comes out on standard out and read is what comes out on standard error cool. so if you wanted to you can either clear that output copy it to the clipboard or save it to a file this over here is for stopping a process and this one here is for stopping a process if it should be still running which in case it is 
we launch the experimental process um, and immediately stops it and closes the tab as well so we head over to the analyze tab the current experiment and we'll just run a test so yeah okay let's have a test zero as always not very good on the RS data set and J48 a little bit better all right so I could basically then here just close all of that and then exit that all right that's it for now thanks for listening and watching